This is the first talk in this talk series that's a collaboration by Protocol Labs and Agoric on distributed programming for a decentralized world. And what I'll be explaining today is an overview of the Agoric architecture. I'll be touching on many things that later talks in this talk series will go into in some depth. For 30 years, many of us have been dreaming about using modern cryptography to bring the world economy online into the decentralized world of crypto commerce. And it's finally now happening because of this world of blockchain. However, the way it's happening has some show-stopping problems that need to be fixed before we can actually realize that dream. The current way people write smart contracts is too hazardous. We see experts putting a lot of effort into crafting simple contracts that turn out to have bugs that cause hundreds of millions of dollars to disappear overnight with no recourse. The languages in which programmers are asked to write smart contracts are unfamiliar languages. This creates a tremendous barrier to adoption. The primitives that the smart contracts are built out of are non-composable, leading the contracts themselves to not compose well. And the result is that we cannot create the rich networks of interacting contracts needed to, to mirror the rich interaction of contractual arrangements in real world markets. And every chain is built as if it is supposed to be the only chain in the world. And the result is that programmers thinking of approaching the world of smart contracts have to place a bet before they know who, if anyone, will win. That itself is a great barrier to adoption. But more than that, markets are all about network effects. Any market that's limited to what happens on a single chain does not have that network effect. To get the network effects of markets, you have to span chains and non-chains, public and private. You have to make the inroads into existing real-world markets so there's a bridge that people can cross to come into the new world. So we're setting out to address these problems. Agoric is currently at testnet. A little poll, who here knows what testnet is? Okay. What testnet means is that our system is working end-to-end -end well enough that people can start using it in a realistic way, but not with real assets at stake. Do not risk real assets at stake on the system as it is now, but you can write contracts, you can play with the security properties, and the system is working end-to-end, -end, including our software running on a genuine blockchain up at servers that are not in our house. And those, the blockchain we're building on a Cosmos zone. We announced that we're a testnet at ZCon1, and when we did that, we showed the Pixel Dust demo. What the Pixel Dust demo is about is it creates this little real estate market that is running on the chain, which is this square of pixels, where each pixel can be individually owned and traded. And if you own a pixel, you have the right to change its color. So over here, I'm supposedly typing, not really, um, uh, a command in JavaScript that where this JavaScript command goes to our software 
running on a local machine, and then the objects on that local machine in turn send a message to objects running on our chain that actually brings about the change of color of the pixel. So not only can you buy and sell pixels and negotiate for pixels, create a market in pixels, you can create auction institutions of various kinds for trading these rights. You can create derivative instruments, covered calls, futures, etc. And if you can do that for rights to color a pixel, you can do it for multi-million dollar financial instruments. So what's going on under the surface? So as is familiar from any memory safe object programming language, if object Alice has a reference to object pixel, object Alice can invoke object pixel, can say pixel.fade. And the result is that a fade message goes from Alice to the pixel. What if the pixel is not on Alice's machine, is not co-located with Alice? What if the pixel is elsewhere on a chain as in what you saw. Well now, instead of dot, we use the, the infix bang operator, which means eventual send, send an asynchronous message. Uh, the syntax is uh, currently proposed to the ECMAScript committee. Uh, it's simple syntactic sugar for things that you can write without the syntax. But the semantics of it are, send the message to the object wherever the object is. So when Alice sends that message, she's sending it as an object message as if the pixel object is local. That object message makes it to the serialization layer, which is our CAPTP system for the capability transport protocol. And what that CAPTP layer does is it serializes the object message into a serialized blob. The serialized blob is handed over to the IBC layer, the inter, the inter blockchain protocol, which Agoric and Cosmos are collaborating on. And what that does is it adds the crypto so that the message will be recognized as legitimate by the destination. And then it sends it between machines. And since the receiving machine, in this case, is a chain, it has to broadcast the message so it arrives at all the relevant validators. And each validator then does the same thing, which is the IBC layer validates and removes the crypto, leaving the binary blob that gets unserialized by the CAPTP layer, turning it into an object message that gets delivered to the pixel. So this technology stack comes in several layers. At the bottom, we have the machine layer. In the machine layer, each of the individual rectangles here represents a distinct physical machine, but every stack is a logical machine. To us, a blockchain is simply a logical machine that's, that's highly credible because it's built out of the massive multi-way agreement of many physical machines that cross-check each other. But each of these machines is only one machine in a network of assumed to be mutually suspicious machines. So on top of this, we put our VAT layer. The VAT are the individual green rectangles here. And that's our process-like unit 
of computation. Uh, that is an island of synchrony. That's interact with each other only asynchronously. And they interact by sending asynchronous messages over these data pipes that connect one VAT to another. And over this network of logical machines held together by this secure protocol, we build a world of secure distributed JavaScript objects where the objects are themselves layered on top of the, um, the connections, the data pipes between the VATs so that the object messages are conveyed by uh, the cryptography at the data pipe level. And we use our system of secure distributed objects to build our smart contracting system, our system of electronic rights and smart contracts. And we crucially We leverage the distributed object system, the secure distributed object system, so that we can write the smart contracts directly and simply as patterns of objects. Our smart contracts themselves are not expressed using cryptographic concepts. We invest in the hard work of designing cryptographic protocols. We invest in it once to create the system of distributed secure objects, and once we have that in place, we can now express the smart contracts simply as patterns of objects. The smart contract layer demonstrates why blockchain is of fundamental value in bringing about the kind of world of smart contracting we need. Some contracts, such as the exchange of one value for another, let's say, some contracts need to be globally, mutually credible and transparent. And by running those contracts on a blockchain, everyone knows that everyone else is seeing the same activity and with the same result. However, not all contracts need that kind of global visibility. Many contracts would prefer to execute in a more private manner. So our overall fabric covers this whole heterogeneous uh, variety of platforms. Uh, again, chains and non-chains, public and private. So you can run the individual contract wherever it's mutually acceptable for the participants in that contract. These layers are held together by layers of protocol. The IBC layer, the, inter the uh, inter-blockchain protocol, builds these secure data pipes out of the system of separate machines. CAPTP, the capability transport protocol, builds the world of distributed objects out of the world of secure data pipes. And then ERTP is the electronic rights transfer protocol, which is now a set of object interfaces for expressing electronic rights in a generic fashion so that we can build highly reusable and composable contracts that can apply to a wide range of rights. This is, this is not actually the end of the talk. Rather, this talk is divided into four parts. This is the end of the first part. At the end of each part, I'll be pausing briefly for questions and then taking remaining questions at the end. And the remaining parts will go into uh, some of these layers in somewhat more depth, and then following talks in the series, we'll explore them in greater depth.